Hey, uh, welcome back. This is part four of setting up and starting a simple, uh, creating a simple project within MP Lab X. So part one, we just created a project. Part two, we created this configuration bits file, and part three, we created a simple uh, application, a uh, program that includes the main function. So, uh, you know, usually, you know, we have some sort of a template like this to start off with. So I generally don't you know use the file uh, where is it new file main to create it I generally just go to the folder I take a I look at an existing project for example here I, I take any this one might have an example a main application I just copy this as a template paste it into paste it into the project folder and rename it as so I give it a new name and then in here in source files we can just go add existing item and in this case I've added a uh, lead one so it's easier than starting from from scratch every time some of the some of the information you know you'll find is is going to be reused for example you know defining the, the crystal frequency and maybe perhaps including the, the one second delay function things like that so when you we've compiled it we're going to compile and debug and show how to simulate so the you know if we were going to simulate it you can see down here when we create the project we use the simulator tool now it's a good idea I'm using a 19.66 megahertz crystal on the actual board and if I want to try and simulate you know real timing in here and, and you know determine how long a piece of code actually takes to run given this clock frequency then I need to go and set my uh, my simulator properties and give it that information so I'll go Capar project properties uh, simulator you can see here it's instruction frequency cycles so I have to find this as 4915200 which is uh, which is 19.6 divided by 4 so take your crystal frequency and all the pick uh, my controller your instruction cycle frequency is your crystal or your system clock frequency divided by four. Okay, we'll see how that's useful later on. Anyway, we're gonna then uh, clean and build for debugging because we're gonna simulate as opposed to download a hex file. So we don't want a hex file, we want an L file for simulation. Okay. Now we're going to simulate. Now when we're doing simulation we could put in breakpoints where the program, you know, when we start the simulation, the simulation will stop at these breakpoints. So I'm going to put a breakpoint here, a software breakpoint here, and a software breakpoint here. Uh, you know, when we're simulating, as opposed to debugging the actual code on hardware, we can have as many software breakpoints as, we, as, 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 as really as we want. Uh, when we're debugging it on actual hardware, in other words, running the code while it's on the hardware, we can only have, I think I have a limit here of two to three breakpoints. So up here, this is a bit really confused me sometimes. We've created the L file already, so we could just launch the debugger main project. But if we haven't created the L file, we could go debug main project, which will create the L file and then launch the debugger main project. So we do the debug main project first, maybe just to show you that. So you can see if I debug the main project, it's going through the whole process again of compile and build, create an L file, and eventually this part here is launching uh, the simulator. So there's various options here. I won't go through them all, but just stop, useful, and continue. So you can see that the simulation has run and it's stopped. The debugger is halted. Down here at the bottom, you can see the debugger is halted at the first breakpoint. I can look at my SFR, and my port B is a special function register down here it's at 5a from the from what it was set initially so we run the simulation to the next breakpoint it's running it takes a little bit of time because of this uh, one second delay which remember is, a, is really a lot of instruction cycles you can see now the port B has finished at 0f so it seems to be working working fine Now it finishes at F0. 
so you know if the green means this is the next uh, line to run we can also look at a, a stopwatch to show how long it takes because we've set up the, the simulator properties correctly if we run the simulation between from running this to the next breakpoint there's a one second delay we see that the simulator calculates correctly this one second so it knows that there's four nine one five three eight seven instruction cycles I told it what my clock frequency is and my instruction cycle frequency is so it's calculated that the time it takes to run this particular piece of code is just over one second so everything seems seems okay then if you want to stop the simulation you can stop just by the way where did I get that you know I can close this here the stopwatch close the SFR uh, if you go down here pick memory views there's your SFR sorry pick memory views SFR and tools debug and for the stopwatch it's I'm always having trouble finding some of these things debug stopwatch and here you can clear the previous and run again and so it took one second between this breakpoint and this breakpoint which is correct okay so finish this stop if I want to download this project onto hardware I can go clean and build main project created a hex file which is I don't have an in circuit the, the ICD3 uh, programmer connected to my board I have a, a different programmer that I'm going to use so I need to know the location of this hex file if I go out here I can up, up, open up my PPP programmer uh, I just auto detect so my, I have a PIC18 4520 chip connected Okay, I'm going to open, and you can see that I've already opened this uh, car park disk default production, and here's the X file. Open this to check if the if the configuration bits are set correctly. I can go view the hex file that I've just opened. Uh, config screen, and you can see here's all the configuration bits that we created in part two seem to be set up correctly. Uh, everything looks fine so then I can send it to the big micro and when that sends it's just a little bit slow because I'm running off a USB stick at the moment but uh, when that sends I can see my board that the LEDs are flashing correctly with the correct one second delay okay see you soon